It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think so. Let's see. All right. Are we ready to do this? Number thirty-two. <coughs> All right. So, Scottish government is estimating salaries, weekly salaries for men and women, and we have some data. The average weekly salary for men, 317 pounds. Women, 132 pounds, or 172 pounds. Uh, so that seems like a lot, right? Seems like a big difference. Of course, this is just a sample. All right, so that you know, we may have a wider difference for our confidence interval. But what do we have our point estimate difference? between men and women. 145? All right, so 145 is our point estimate of difference. All right, and we have standard uh, sample size, 1,500 men, 1,200 women. We have a standard deviation for the men is 89 pounds. Standard deviation for the women is 67 pounds. So we've got our point estimate difference, mean difference, 145. But we want a confidence interval. So we want to find the standard error, also known as what? What's the long version of the standard error? The sampling distribution of the sample mean difference. Yeah, start with standard deviation, though. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean difference, also known as standard error. All right, so how do we calculate this? We take uh, square root. Square root. 89 squared. Uh, yep, 89 squared, standard deviation, 1 squared, divided by sample size, 1, 1,500, plus 67 squared. <coughs> squared, standard deviation, 2, divided by sample size, 2, 1,200. All right, and add those together, square root everything, what do we get? 3.00. 0. 3.00. 0. Yeah. 3, exactly. Yeah. All right, that's, that's convenient. What is our Z value we need for a 95% cop? So it's 1.96. 1.96. 1. Yep, 1.96. All righty. So, we are going to take 145 plus or minus 1.96 times 3. Right? And what do we get for our low confidence interval? 139.12. And for the high? 150.88. 150.88. Okay, somebody want to make an interpretation of that that starts with I am 95% confident? I'm 95% confident that the average income of the population sample distribution of. Oh God. No. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to keep up with you for a minute, but I couldn't. And take it, Lorette. I am, uh, I am 95% confident that the true sample mean difference. The true mean, mean difference. difference. Yeah, we don't need to say sample mean because okay. we're looking for the true mean difference. Okay. Is between. Uh, I have it here. Yep, is between those two numbers. Right. <laughs> I'm 95% confident that the true mean difference for the whole population. If you want to add that, you could. True population mean difference is between. 139.12 and 150.88. So, seems like a pretty big difference, right? And we haven't really talked about this, but note that this interval does not cross zero. All right, so our 95% confidence does not include zero. So what if somebody were to try to tell us, oh, that's just a sample there could be no difference between the amount men are paid and the amount women are paid. What would we tell that person? 
they're wrong, why, what, what do we have to, to back that up? We have a 95% confidence interval. We are 95% certain. We can even be more certain than that, that it doesn't cross zero. But our 95% confidence interval doesn't include zero. So zero is zero difference is not in our confidence interval estimate. So we are we are highly confident that there is at least some difference, <coughs> and we think it is between 139 and 150. All right. Any questions on that? No oh, question. If it's a sample, why are we using is it sigma? Oh, uh, this one? Yeah. Like, would we like? Because we're, we're, I guess we're given um, population, <coughs> what are we given? Are we given? Because so, wouldn't that then be for the entire population and not the sample? Oh, no, the sample. Yeah, we're given, we calculate sample standard deviations. So what we did is we interviewed uh, 1,200 women and we asked them how much they made. All right, and that 1,200 women of how much they made, it came out to a distribution. It, it may not have been normal, but we were able to calculate a, sa a standard deviation for that. Remember in class okay. one? So that's from the total, the 1,200 is the total population. 1,200 is the sample size. We asked 1,200 women, how much did you make? And the whole population of women in Scotland is 5 million, 10 million? Uh, small country, and we asked 1,200 of them using good sampling techniques, and we were able to calculate a standard deviation among those 1,200. Like one of them said, I make you know 600 pounds a week. The next one said, I make 400 pounds a week. The next one said, I make 125 pounds a week. We added up all those numbers. Remember in class one, we said we could calculate standard deviation if we have those three employees making widgets. One of them makes three. One of them makes five. One of them makes seven. What's the standard deviation of those three numbers? We, uh, we find the mean, we take the average dif difference, square it, add it up, <coughs> divide by, by the numbers. So, so even though you're looking at a sample, you're not necessarily using the sample standard deviation? This is sample standard deviation. Oh, oh my gosh. Is this, is this it? Yeah, is like that's it? what's throwing me off. Like, sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like S1, right? Oh, right, so that's sorry. what I, that's, okay. Oh my gosh. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, so I should have put S instead okay. of sigma there. Okay, great catch. Hopefully that exercise ingrained this a little bit more. Maybe if just for me. So I think... Uh, we do not have a further example on that one. I think we're ready to move on to uh, the next topic, right? Yep. All right, let's do it. It all sounds familiar. <laughs> Good. All right. So, uh, estimating the difference between two population proportions. So, Percentage of Americans who support um, oh, uh, whatever the, the Kyoto Accord is 74%. Percentage of Canadians who support that same accord is 61%. Difference between those two proportions, 13%. That's in reality. If we ask every single Canadian, every single American. But if we just want to estimate that, we would have to take a sample. And our sample proportion differences would come out to different things each time. And we would construct a confidence interval just like we did in the previous material. So we're going to come up with something we call the sampling distribution of the sample proportion difference. What do you think of that? We are going to say that it has predictable sampling distribution properties, just like in the previous material. And brand new again this time, building the confidence interval. I guess the joke only works one time. We're going to continue to build a confidence interval same way we did last time. All right, so let's think about the sampling distribution of the sample proportion difference. So, let me erase this. It's confusing me. All right, let's erase 
that. Okay, so, all right, suppose we want to know the difference between percentage of Americans who support this agreement and percentage of Canadians who support this agreement. There is a proportion in reality of Americans who support it and Canadians who support it. We don't know exactly what it is, so we need to sample for it. So we're going to take a good sample, good sampling techniques, and ask Americans, do you support this? We're going to come up with a percentage of Americans who support it. Do the same thing in Canada, percentage of Canadians who support it. We're going to come up with a number, the difference between those two. Say Canadians, uh, there's 17% more Canadians support it than Americans. All right, that's our first sample. Our first sample proportion comes out to be 0.17. Then we do it again. And again. again. <laughs> Second sample proportion comes out to be 0.179. And we keep doing it again 10,000 times. We put all those proportion differences those on a frequency distribution, what do you think that frequency distribution is going to look like? Yeah, it's going to be a normal bell curve. Fantastic. Equal probability being a little bit higher, a little bit lower, no reason why it wouldn't. What will be the center of this distribution? <coughs> yes, also known as what, Kristen? The true Proportion. True proportion. <laughs> yeah. proportion True proportion <coughs> difference. Yeah. The word mean, I guess, is not is only relevant because I'm asking you now for the mean of the frequency distribution. But the mean of the frequency distribution is the true proportion difference in the whole population. Okay. Let's look at the other properties. So, pi 1 is the proportion population 1, say Canada, pi 2 is the proportion population 2, say America. The difference between the two population proportions, this pi 1 minus pi 2, this is the difference in reality between the two proportions. The point estimate of the difference between the two population proportions is p with a bar over it, 1 minus p bar 2. All right, so we've got our point estimate versus our estimated based on our sample. And we're always keeping in mind the reality of what we're looking for. And if we were to take an infinite number of these, graph them, we would call it the sampling distribution of the sample proportion, all possible values of the sample proportion difference. How about these properties? The shape of this distribution will be normal for suffi sufficiently large sample sizes. And we define large to be fit both of these criteria that we discussed earlier. n times p bar 1, n times p bar must be greater than 5, and n times 1 minus p bar must also be greater than or equal to 5 for both samples. The center is equal to the population proportion difference, pi 1 minus pi 2. And we're able to calculate a standard error for this sampling distribution of the sample proportion difference, which is this. I do not know the logic of how all that works together. We can just crunch the numbers. Well, let's talk it through, though. What is that? What does that symbol mean? Deviation. Standard deviation. Of the point estimate. Yeah, of the point estimate of the sample proportion difference. You could also say standard deviation of the sample proportion difference. <coughs> also, you could say the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion difference. All right. And there we have it.
we've got a metric for standard deviation of this sampling distribution and the sample proportion difference. And the mean <coughs> is the true population proportion difference. And again, this part right here, this p bar 1 minus p bar 2, why is that on the graph and what does it mean? It's the sample. Yeah, the sample proportion difference. All right, and this is a graph. The reason that it's placed there is this is a graph of an infinite, an infinite number of these. Same properties hold true. What are the chances of any one of these sample proportion differences being within one standard deviation of the mean? 68.3, two standard deviations of mean, 95.5. All right. Confidence interval. All right. Point estimate difference. So this is sample proportion in Canada, sample proportion in America. What's the difference? It comes out to 11% difference, plus or minus. Depending on our confidence interval, that's going to be the z-score we're going to use. And then this whole thing is our standard deviation metric. We could call it standard error. We could also call it standard deviation of the sampling distribution and the sample proportion difference. <coughs> Since we do not know the population proportion for one and two, we will use what we do know, which is the sample proportion one, sample proportion two. Make sense? All right. Let's take a look at page 296, 8.8. .8. Question count. How did they get 20.27? <coughs> uh, in the question. <laughs> here, here, ahead of me. <laughs> all right, all right. Let me, let me, let me pull it up. I will, I will absolutely answer that question. 296, 8.8. .8. Survey of flight attendants. All right, in a survey of flight attendants working on major domestic airlines, 100 <coughs> senior, all right, so that's 100 senior flight attendants and 150 junior flight attendants were selected at random for the survey. One of the questions asked the survey participants. What factor was your most significant was most significant in your choosing to become a flight attendant? 35% of the senior attendants and 40% of the junior attendants said opportunity to travel was the most important. All right. So, this is a little confusing. Well, they've got all this, but let's just write down the stuff we know. Let's write down sample proportion <coughs> for junior equals sample proportion for senior equals, all right, and let's get N for junior equals, let's get N for senior equals. All right, let's start with that. So what's the proportion of junior flight attendants who say opportunity to travel? 40. Okay. 40 out of how many? Okay, so what's the sample proportion? 0. 0.26? 0. 0.26666. Okay. I could get on board with that. Oh, that's how you get it. Okay. All right, that'll be cut off. Point two seven. Alright, and what's the proportion of senior flight attendants? Point three five. Point three five. Okay. So more senior flight attendants marked opportunity <coughs> of travel as their main reason than junior flight attendants. Alright, so the younger flight attendants may not have valued travel as much. 
All right, what's our sample size for junior? 150. 150. What's our sample size for senior? 100. 100. Okay. All right, and we want to build a 90% confidence interval of the difference in proportion of senior flight attendants and the proportion of junior flight attendants who would give this answer if they were asked of all senior and all junior flight attendants. Okay, that's very wordy, but what do they mean when they say all senior and all junior? What's a short way of saying that? True population. Yeah, if we're to ask the whole population of both. What would be the true proportion if we're to ask the whole population of both? And we want a 90% confidence interval. All right. So now we know we're going to need a z-score. We're also going to need a standard error, right? So let's start with the standard error. So this is standard error of sampling distribution of the sample proportion difference equals. Hmm. All right, so let's do the, the 0.35 first, just so we don't get confused. We'll do the bigger number first, if that's all right with you. So 0.35 times 1 minus 0.35 is 0.65, right? Divided by the sample size of 100 plus, let's do the 0.27, 0.27 times 1 minus 0.27 is 0.63? 0.73. 0.73, thank you. Divided by sample size, 150. <coughs> so we're going to add those two together, and we're going to take the square root of all of that. If you have the answer, just blurt it out. Just this part. I got 0 0.23 divided by 100. Yeah. Uh, All right. Your final answer is? 0 0.0023. All right. I'm not liking that as much as I see this in the answer key. It's 0 0.06. Yeah. All right. I'm liking 0.06 more. I got that for the final. I think he took the 0.35 times the 0.65 over 100. Mm -hmm. That's an idea. Yeah. Yeah, that was the 0.0023. One of the total answers. I got the point as high as zero. So that entire square root is 0.06. Right. Yeah. 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 Wait. The entire answer. Yeah. He the entire answer. answer. Yeah. The first yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. I think you were just asking for 0.5 and 0.5 by the Okay, you got it. You're good. You're good. Yeah. So the answer, as Kyle pointed out, is 0 0.06. Kristen agreed. Uh, 0 0.06 is our standard error, also known as standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion difference. All right. Uh, let's get our Z. What's our Z? 
Z equals 1.65. All right, and let's do one more thing before we put this all together. What is our point estimate for the difference between the proportion of senior flight attendants and junior flight attendants? If we had to guess, what do we think the difference is without doing confidence intervals? What would it be? All right, well, what's our proportion for senior flight attendants? And what's our proportion for junior flight attendants? And what's the difference? 0 0.08. So, our point estimate for the difference between those two populations, 8%. We think the senior flight attendants are 8% more likely to value travel. We're good there? All right, so if we want confidence intervals, let's take 0.08%, or you know, 0.08 or 8%, and let's go plus or minus 1.65 times 0.06. Uh, the 8% for me? The 8%? Okay, that is our point estimate of the difference between senior flight attendants and junior flight attendants. Well, I should write this out. So, senior flight attendants, 0.35. <coughs> oh, minus the 0.27. My, yep, my, yeah. minus 0.27 equals 0 0.08. All right, so we want 8% plus or minus 1.65 times 0 0.06. All right, what's, what does that give us for our lower bound then? Negative 0 0.019. All right, negative 0 0.019, and what's our upper bound? 0.179. 0.179. All right. So let's start with this one here. 0.179. That means 17.9%. That's our upper estimate for the difference. We think the difference could be as much as 17.9%. We think senior flight attendants could have valued travel almost 18% more than junior flight attendants. In which case, senior flight attendants, something generational maybe, they really value travel. Now this one, negative 0 0.019, about 2%, negative 2%. What does that mean? Does that mean senior flight attendants value travel 2% more? Actually it means Senior flight attendants value travel 2% less, meaning, in fact, junior flight attendants value travel more. So we have here, uh, let, me, let me just say the interpretation, and then we'll talk about what it means. The interpretation we'd say, as we've done in class so far, is we'd say I am, uh, what are we, 90%? 90% uh, confident. 90%? Percent confident. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, okay. So I'm 90% confident that the proportion difference in the population of senior flight attendants versus junior flight attendants is between negative 2% and 17.9%. We would say that and we would be correct. But we need to remember that the negative 2% means that it's the other way around. That in fact, junior flight attendants might value travel more. So, if we are to believe this upper end of the confidence interval, senior flight attendants value travel 18% more. If we are to believe this lower end of the confidence interval, other way around, junior flight attendants value travel 2% more. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's confusing. So, what it means is that this confidence interval crosses zero. Remember, I pointed out in the last one with the Scottish pay difference between men and women, I said it did not cross zero. So someone who came to us and said, well, maybe the true 
difference in salary between men and women, maybe it's zero. In the Scottish pay example, we could tell that person, no, that's not right, based on our 95% confidence interval, it's not zero. We're at least 95% confident that it's not zero. But in this example, we can't say that same thing. Our confidence interval includes zero, so it could be that there is no difference in preference between junior flight attendants and senior flight attendants. It could be senior flight attendants value it more, it could be junior flight attendants value it more, it could be zero, no difference. So that's just a little treat we get in terms of how we'd interpret this. But, you know, the, the calculations are, are also good practice as well. Any questions there? All right, I think we just are scheduled to do one more example <coughs> with an optional second one. All right, 296, number 42. Number 42. All right, School of Journalism. Is this going to the second page? Yeah, okay. All right, so this goes into the second page. You're going to want a 98% confidence interval for the difference in the proportion of journalists of the two represent, represented populations. All right, so number 42. Spend five minutes working on that for me. And we will come back together.
All right, we ready? Ready to do it? All right, so we've got a proportion of print journalists who are Democrats and a proportion of broadcast journalists who are Democrats. So print journalists, 37%, broadcast, 32%. So what, what might we say? Let's just say something about that, just to put that in context for us. Just looking at that raw data, higher percentage of print journalists, what would, you, what would we say about that? Say something, anything about it. Yeah, yeah, they are. All right, that's one. That's, I'm looking for maybe something a little bit, a little bit further than that. Maybe we're trying to figure out the type of stories print journalists are exposed to and how that affects their political leanings. Maybe. Print journalists make less money, so they're more likely to be Democrats. I don't know. Maybe there's a correlation between being Democrat, Republican, and making less money. Maybe we're trying to figure something like that out. We're trying to support some statement, or we might be trying to refute some statement. So we've got the raw data uh, out of sample sizes of this much. All right, what's our point estimate for the difference? All right, 0.37 minus 0.32 equals 0 0.05. Our point estimate, 5% more likely to be Democrat if you're a print journalist. We want a 98% confidence level. All right, so what's our Z score for that, Z value? 2.33. Does everyone agree? Fantastic. All right, and what, is this, what does this mean? Someone read that to me. 2%. No, this symbol. The standard deviation of the sample proportion difference. Yeah, I could go with that. Standard deviation of the sample proportion difference. You could have thrown in sampling distribution out of sample proportion difference. That would have been fine too. 0.02. It comes out to 0 0.02. All right. 0 0.02. All righty. So we're going to take 0 0.05 plus minus. 2.33 times 0 0.02. And what's our lower bound going to be? 0 0.004. Okay. Upper bound? 0 0.096. Does everyone agree? No. All right. One strong disagreement. I got 4.534. For the first one? I got negative. I did 0.046. Should I not do 0.46? All 
All right, so this is 2% times 2.3. So that's going to give us, it's going to give us uh, 4, you know, more than 4%, 4.6%. Yeah? That's what we got. So I'm liking, I'm liking this. I'm, I'm liking this. I'm not committing. <laughs> but I'm liking Kyle's answer. What do you have, Kristen? I got for the lower end, 0. 0.4534. 0. 0.45, so 45%? Oh, I'm doing 0. 0.5, not 0. 0.05. Okay, okay. okay. So this is 0. 0.004, which is a half of 1%. Okay. All right, and I'm liking it. And the upper bound, 9.6%. I'm liking that too. That's 5% plus about 4, 4.6. All right, Kyle, do you want to do the interpretation as you stand as the undisputed victor in this argument? I heard someone else do it. All right, All right. Help somebody help us out. Someone give us the interpretation. Dave, send us home in style. Um, we are 95. Yeah, 98. 98% confident. <coughs> that the true, true proportion difference you could add in the whole population is between 0 0.004 and 0 0.096. I'm 98% confident that the true proportion <coughs> difference is between 0 0.004 and 0 0.096. Think? Good. We're good. We're good. We're golden. Golden. All right. I think there was one optional question. Do we do we need to do the optional question, or we want to go home? I'll be around. If anyone wants to ask me some more questions, we do the optional question. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you all next week. <coughs> class next week. I think we're going to do hypothesis testing, which is fun. Yes. We should have the week before and the week off, and the week after off.